Okay, I wanted to just talk real quick about xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis. It's a chronic granulomatous uh, pyelonephritis, and you have to be able to differentiate it from a couple of things, namely metastatic uh, nodules in the kidney. Uh, but I want to go through a few trigger words. So xantho, it is actually itself orange-ish yellow. Xantho meaning yellow nodules. So if you're looking at yellow nodules, you want to have this in the differential diagnosis. Yellow, orange. Granulomatose, you need to be thinking chronic, right? Chronic diseases are usually, um, or I should say chron granulomatous diseases are chronic. So they may give you even some clues like IL-12 or interferon gamma, uh, TNF-alpha, um, that sort of thing. What does look what looks weird here? Well, what I love about this disease is that there's a pathology sign that's called the bear claw. There's renal pelvis dilation, and you can see it kind of looks like a bear claw. And important to note, it's only going to be in one kidney. So you generally it's going to be unilateral, although of course it could happen on both sides. Why is this important? As you can tell, there's a central there's a central lesion here. This is actually cal a centrally calcified lesion. Um, this is particularly helpful because it's a granulomatose disease. You need to be able to differentiate this from a perinephric abscess. What else would you find in a granulomatose disease? Well, you have your foamy macrophages. It's associated with proteus. Here are some findings with proteus. Here's some examples of patients you may find. Child with an abdominal mass, again unilateral. Female with recurrent UTIs with proteus. Important to note, she may or may not have weight loss, which may lead you to believe that she could have cancer. That's why it's important to diagnose. Third type of patient, very rare but important to know, renal transplant patient with the similar symptoms. How are you going to treat it? A nephrectomy.